Here's Baz. Well, Angela, thank you very much. Just before we welcome Monica with today tonight, I'm sure everybody by now is well and truly aware that we're celebrating a very special milestone here at Seven News, and that, of course, is 30 extraordinary years side by side on the Seven News desk of our great friends and colleagues, Rick Arden and Susanna Carr. Ange, come on back in, and we'd also fittingly like to welcome one of our true and great friends here at Thanks, Seven News, Jeff Newman, who for many years was side by side with Rick and Sue, of course. Jeffrey, welcome back. Great Thank you. to see Thank you. you. Thank you very much indeed. You. These are not for you, Rick. They're for you, Susanna. <laughs> Thank you. I feel, no, I've got to say that I feel vindicated because many, many years ago I played a big part in getting Susanna away from the mob down the road and coming here to join the wonderful world of commercial television. It was difficult to do. She required a lot of talking. <laughs> you did. But, but you did it. But you succeeded well. Yes, I know. Well, a 17-year-old, you're a little unafraid to go <laughs> leap into new, new well, places. But no, it, I'll, I'll bet you're pretty happy with it's the decision. best decision I ever made. And Rick, congratulations. You looked about 10 when you first started exactly here. That's right, I was. <laughs> That's an appropriate point, Jeff. The consummate professional, as always, as we cue some of the vision of the old hairstyles and the <laughs> 80s fashion. <laughs> uh, uh, Rick and Sue, 30 years together. I'm sure it's been a wonderful journey, as we know. I'm sure there's some people that you'd like to acknowledge tonight. Baz, I don't think we ever projected forward 30 years to realise that we'd still be here, but if, if it weren't for the public and people supporting us and showing us so much warmth over the years, uh, we wouldn't be here. So thank you very much to everybody who's watched us over the last 30 years. It's been wonderful to our loyal viewers. It's been an absolute privilege, a pleasure for us, and we should be here for a long time to come, and uh, we will bring you the best news in Perth. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the great story. This story is not ending just yet. 30 magnificent years, and uh, I think... I think it's right to say not just 30 years but 30 years on top 30 years at the very top of their game so on behalf of everybody at seven news uh, angela and i have great pleasure in working with you every night monica in just a moment we'll welcome as well and jeff terrific to see you back on behalf of all of the people watching and all of the seven team right around the country and indeed here in perth thank you i think our news director howard gretton summed it up best when he said you're not just news presenters you're news royalty <laughs> oh, thank, you. thank you prince basil <laughs> and we thank you very much for being such a big part of our lives for so long keep up the good work thank we you. want to see more of it a thank wonderful you. ride it's been great to be a part of it i'm sure you've enjoyed it and now monica takes a look back at where it all began Thanks, Basil. Sue, just love the big hair and the shoulder pads. Hello, everyone. It is an extraordinary partnership, but it hasn't always been smooth sailing. Tonight, Rick and Sue reveal their most memorable moments to Alison Fan. From their first ever bulletin to the night, they almost didn't make it. Well, here we are at Perry Lakes. I'm standing here today in Soweto. Here in Monte Carlo Grand Prix time. Here at Kensington Palace. You can see here in Jordan. Here at Horse Guards. Live from the town of Whittlesea. Here I am in one of the oldest parts of Moscow. From across the globe. Oh, hello, I'm Susanna. To here at home. Traffic's still coming back into Perth tonight. You've got to get it right every time. For three decades, Rick Arden and Susanna Carr have sat side by side, night after night, bringing news to the people of Perth. 30 years together, it's lasted longer than some marriages. More than both of our marriages, actually. <laughs> That's right, it has. And it's been a happy relationship too. Uh, you know, working with Sue is wonderful. Channel 7 began broadcasting news from here in their Dianella studios some 50 years ago. For more than half of that time, it's been Rick and Sue at the desk. For people at home, they're like family. And for colleagues like myself, we've shared some amazing and memorable moments. The good, the bad, the unforgettable. And it all began with their first bulletin together, back here in 1985. I've changed, why don't you? Switch to seven at the new time of six for the best news you'll get all day. Plus the award-winning talents of Rick Arden. The Seven Team brings you all the news that matters every night at the new time of six o'clock. This is their very first bulletin, together on air. Good evening and welcome also tonight. West Australians urged to boycott a controversial government survey. News partners who would go on to become simply the best. Times and technology have changed. And 30 years on, Rick and Sue can lay claim to one of the longest-lasting presenting partnerships anywhere in the world. 
only just beaten by another Sue and her co-host, Chuck, in the U.S. Yes, I said a moment ago, I'm Chuck Scarborough. I oh, still right. am, yeah. And, and, and I'm... And you're still Sue Simmons. That's right. Yeah. Chuck and Sue hosted in New York City for 32 years, the world record holders. Rick and Sue, just two years behind them. We had assumed that maybe we had the world record. Yeah, what's going on there? And lo and behold, Sue Simmons and Chuck Scarborough... Sue and Chuck versus Sue and Rick. That's right. How funny. During that time, they've lived and breathed news. And there are some stories they'll never forget, from the heartwarming to the horrific. Oh. For both Rick and Sue, September 11 is something that will stay with them forever. It was a coordinated attack on the twin symbols of US economic and military power. Just to see those live pictures on the other side of the world, to see those two, you know, uh, monumental buildings collapsing and to see people jumping from those buildings in front of you on the other side of the world to their, their deaths is something I'll never forget. Then there was the death of the people's princess, Lady Diana. Tonight, the royal family prepares for Diana's final farewell. Across the globe in London, along with the world's media, was Susanna Carr. Susanna joins us live from London outside Buckingham Palace tonight. And Susanna, we have new evidence now about what caused this dreadful tragedy. Yes, Rick, the man who drove the Princess of Wales to her death was drunk. It would go on to become the biggest funeral the world has ever seen. We weren't supposed to be covering that, but our news director at the time decided to put a personal and local feel to it, an Australian feel, that we should do the commentary. So with about 12 hours notice, we took over the commentary of the funeral. An experience like no other. The atmosphere in London was something I've never experienced before. You had grown men crying in the streets, people queuing overnight to sign a book of remembrance. In 1990, when Iraq invaded Kuwait, the decision was made to send Rick Arden to the war zone. The man who has the hopes of the world on his shoulders has arrived with just one aim, to stop this crisis. Well, we're on the Iraqi border, a very dangerous place, and we thought we had permission to be there. As it turned out, we didn't. We had some machine guns pointed at us. They were yelling at us in Arabic. We turned around and we didn't know whether we were going to be shot in the back or not. A few years later, Perth was in the grip of its own terror. Tonight, the hunt for a killer. Police search for the tiniest of clues. With a serial killer on the loose, like everyone in Perth, Rick and Sue were on the edge of their seats. Back here in Claremont, night is upon us. It's a very tense time down here, despite urgent moves to improve security. What an incredible time that was. And it was a very tense time for the whole of Perth and the western suburbs in particular, as those girls one by one went missing. And to this day, we still don't know the answer to that story. But it was the death of a famous footballer and mate in 2007 that almost led to a tearful breakdown on air. Thanks, Basil. We'll have fuel prices next, and Jeff has the forecast for the rest of the week. The Bulletin, they say, is the hardest they've ever had to front when Channel 7 colleague, sports presenter Chris Mainwaring, died unexpectedly. Matey was our friend, our workmate, and such a nice guy. Oh, I miss you, Chris. That's where we leave you. I've seen pictures of myself reading that story. It's on YouTube, and, and I see this person struggling to read it because I was struggling to read it. And mm. to lose somebody who you've worked so closely with, who you liked so much. A, a lovely guy, happy guy, and to have life cut short like that was truly tragic. One of the stars of a team that would change footy in WA forever. and Sue rate the West Coast Eagles' first grand final victory among one of the most jubilant times on air. Well, I remember I was there at the MCG. It was fantastic. 92, then 94. Took a long time after that, 2006. However, it's the Dockers' turn now. Frio did have its moment many years before when Ben Lexon and Bondi brought home the America's Cup. <laughs> Across the country, they celebrated with WA. And the atmosphere was electric down in Fremantle. I've never seen it like it. And from cup fever to gold fever. This million dollars worth of gold arrived at the doorstep, literally the doorstep of Channel 7. The Perth Mint Swindle has become one of Perth's most intriguing mysteries, with Channel 7 at the centre of the saga. 
Alison, should I interview you about that one? <laughs> you know more about Mickleburg Gold than anybody, but what an amazing story with that gold going missing. And then two great big containers of gold turning up in the grounds of Channel 7. The containers with the gold are believed to have been delivered sometime during the night. What an amazing story and will we ever know the truth? I doubt it. At times, those telling the news are the news. So tired, isn't she? The birth of Rick's first child shared with viewers who think of them as family. It was a wonderful thing and uh, she's now 23, so how time flies. Many, many moments that made us smile. Pancake races through Perth. Our newsman looked to have it won till his pancake deserted him at the finish line, while Susanna decided she'd rather stay friends with hers. Mishaps while live on air. Well, technical problems at the moment, but we'll keep going, excuse me. They said, you're on. I said, here's the next story. Look to the TV monitor. I can only see me. Takes effect from July the 1st. Well, look as though we haven't got that story, so we'll continue the next story. The... Excuse me again. Yep. And then the phone rang. We had a phone in those days. But yes, uh, tell them we've got a problem. We'll go to the next story. Went to the next story. Nothing. Went to the next story. Nothing. Then they rang and said, we have to abandon the news. And I virtually said, what? OK, thanks. Well, unfortunately, we are having extreme uh, technical problems at the moment, so what we'll have to do is take you to our next program, Sons and Daughters. For the moment, good night. I think it was the first time a news in Australia had been abandoned and it actually made the papers on the East Coast. Then there's the stuff that never got to air. In this area, too, one of the most tragic wrecks took place. The child's eaten. All but two of the survivors were eaten. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Coming up in seven nightly news is that blowfly buzzes past. Did you see that? That was a ripper. There he goes. Hooray! No cyclones today, thankfully, but plenty of other news. <laughs> Only I can find it. <laughs> Say la vie. If something happens, well, you just move on. The thing with most things that go wrong in the studio is that most people at home don't know. And that's because they've been covered over and handled. And so we see a lot more that happens than people at home do. When it comes to live TV, they think fast on their feet. Nowadays, new technology means bloopers are rare. Incredible changes. Yeah, I mean, we've been. gone from film to videotape to digital. Uh, we've got people sending in news stories on iPhone. And another big change is everything's accessible instantly from anywhere in the world. And it was right here from the Channel 7 newsroom that Susanna was on air live across the country as the Sydney siege came to a dramatic end. More pictures now coming through. It looks like there's more activity going on. Sean, let's tell her, find out what's happening now. Look, uh, you can probably hear the loud explosions yes. behind me. I... Uh, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's gunfire. With Sydney's Martin Place studios evacuated, the broadcasting was coming out of Perth. Uh, the, the police are throwing something? They are. They're throwing in something into the doorway. And we've just well, seen another hostage brought grenade. out. As harrowing as those experiences are, it's the work that I enjoy most because I really like working unscripted. I like having to think on my feet. That was an incredible experience because we went live for three hours and we just had to follow the action as it unfolded. Now another era is about to begin, with the pair set to host the news from a state-of-the-art studio in Osborne Park. These technological advances that are in front of us when we move to Osborne Park into the building with the West Australian, you know, it, it's a wonderful avenue of journalism that will just keep expanding into the future. So I think we have a wonderful future ahead of us. A long-standing partnership that spans generations of viewers who night after night have tuned into the faces they've come to know and trust for 30 years. So there's a whole new era to start in, so as to how long we keep going with it, it's open. An extraordinary career with many more years to come, we're sure.